JBS's The Jake Ehrenreich Show is brought to you in part by Stephanie and Simon Bergson, The Skolnick Family Charitable Trust, Helene and Barry Lewis, Judy Friedman and Ron Goldstock, in honor of Hyas, Jonathan Fershpan, The Memory of Nadia and Milton Bergson, Nira and Ken Abramowitz, Cynthia and Jeffrey Weisenfeld, and by viewers like you. Live from the Triad Theater in New York City, it's the Jake Ehrenreich Show! Tonight, Jake's guests are performer and songwriter Shelly Fisher, the Hebrew Hillbilly, and pop hop duo Brigel, plus a special Catskills Hall of Fame induction to Sammy Davis Jr. And now, please welcome your host, direct from Brooklyn, Jake Ehrenreich! Wow, wow, welcome, welcome, my friends. Give yourselves a nice big round of applause. Wow. This is fabulous music, comedy, lots of Jews. It's great. <laughs> my name is Jake Ehrenreich. I started my career in the Catskill Mountains as a young musician, and I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> so I love Brooklyn. It was very important to me, and the Catskills were extremely important to me and my family. We started going up there when I was just a kid. I mean, we do the Catskills Hall of Fame. It really, really means a lot to me. It was an important place to us. What you may not know is I was actually married in the Catskill Mountains. We started going up there. I was an infant with my folks. Now I would be married in the Catskill Mountains. I mean, really, you could say my life began and ended. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's the Catskills. So we were married uh, at the Inn at Lake Joseph on July 13th, 1996 in Forestburg, New York. The groom was 40 years old. The bride was 39 years old. It was the first marriages for both of us. Already a miracle. <laughs> I have no idea who this is. <laughs> My beautiful bride, Lisa. Beautiful and wise, very wise. I remember overhearing a conversation on our wedding day between Lisa and a friend. And the friend asked her, really, what does it feel like? Tell me, what does it feel like to finally be getting married for the first time at age 39? Lisa thought for a moment, and then she said, you know, at this age, it's really not that long a commitment anymore. <laughs> God bless you. So for our ceremony, we picked some things from the Jewish tradition that we both share. There, I've just answered your question that really spoke to us personally. One is that I would wear my version of a kittel. You know what this is? This is a traditional white robe. It symbolizes purity on your wedding day. It's really a very, very beautiful tradition. I learned later that during the ceremony, the piano player, upon seeing Lisa in her white dress, me in my white robe, all the torches we had strewn about, he turned to the flute player and said, looks like a KKK rally. <laughs> I will say, my wedding was a little eerie. We had invited all of my relatives who perished to come and join us in the ceremony. And you know, from the looks of this photograph and that sky, they just may have. As it turns out, our wedding day was the July hurricane of 1996. The way we like to look at it, they all showed up. And then, the piece de resistance, the traditional breaking of the glass. You know, in retrospect, maybe I just should have used a light bulb. Oh, 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 oh,
about Israel and are interested in Jewish life today, there's television just right for you. JBS, the Jewish Broadcasting Service, with daily news from Israel and analysis by the leading figures on the world Jewish scene. Evenings from the 92nd Street Y, a weekly Jewish film festival, Jewish culture, Jewish studies, and Jewish entertainment, and live Friday night services every week, as well as high holiday and festival services. JBS, television worth watching. Folks, in the opening segment tonight, I sang two versions of the song Ode Yishama, whose lyrics echo one of the seven blessings the Shever Brachot recited at a Jewish wedding. This prayer calls for rejoicing with the bride and groom. There are many wonderful melodies that have sprung up around it. The first melody that I sang is the most traditional. Ode Yishama biyade Yehuda uvechutz tot Yerushalayim. This melody no doubt comes from one of the Hasidic dynasties in Eastern Europe. The author is lost to history. But the other two major melodies have a common composer, a composer that is well known to the Jewish community. Od Yishama Be'are Yehuda and Od Yishama Be'are Yehuda Uvechusot Yerushalayim. These melodies were written by Rabbi Shlomo Kalbach. Kalbach is widely regarded as the foremost religious Jewish songwriter of the 20th century. Although his roots lay in traditional Orthodox Judaism, he branched out and created his own style, combining Hasidic Judaism, personal interaction, public concerts, and song-filled synagogue services. Many of his melodies have become standards in the wider Jewish community, from Am Yisrael al-Chai, which he wrote for Soviet Jewry in the 1960s, to Vaha Ereneinu, which we all sing, Vaha Ereneinu Betoratecha. That's Karbach. Many, many more. It's said that Karbach changed the expectations of the prayer experience from somber to uplifting and ecstatic. There are today many Karbach prayer groups throughout the world. Reb Shlomo, as he was known to his followers, left us in 1994. But his music lives on through his daughter, singer songwriter Neshama Karbach and in synagogues, churches, gospel choirs, and temples worldwide. So the next time you're singing an uplifting melody in shul or dancing to a lively horror at a wedding, the chances are pretty good you're doing so to a melody composed by the singing rabbi, Reb Shlomo Kalbach. And now, I'd like to introduce you to our wonderful announcer but tonight in a slightly different capacity. Ladies and gentlemen, New York City-based artist couple Brigel are on a mission to do nothing less than to make the world a better place through their art. They sing, rap, write, act, direct, edit, dance, produce music, film, and TV. Please help me welcome to the stage two very talented people, our own, very own Brienne Berkson, along with her very own Miguel Gluckstern. Please welcome Brigel. Hello, New York. How, are you, how is everyone doing tonight? Good evening. We, uh, we love New York very much because we feel like it's all this difference and so many different kinds of people, but there's harmony, right? And we feel like that's an example for the rest of the world that we can all coexist. I ask too many questions, but barely pay attention. Never present to the messages that are given in this lesson. Life is a lesson. Move to the next one. Every stage is a lecture of my own selection. Why, Why do, do we need, need trauma? To understand how much we have. Why can't we learn from the past? Must be part of the lesson. Living in a prison. Dealing with the pressure of the pressure. Blind to the evidence. No, no one, one has patience. Living in an illusion. We are losing our essence. The sense of being present. Since adolescence, they said, Sex and violence instead of love and happiness To, to mess the message. message Nobody seems to listen Prefer to follow a leader Relinquishing decisions to someone in another position Then complain about it, it's dramatic I keep searching for a way, way Find a way To feel, feel free. free Flying on my own I keep searching 
Transform or do we become numb, lost in the storm? Do we follow the norm to overcome the pressure? Do we know right from wrong? If you don't pay attention, speak true, do your part, uh, choose, choose love. love, know who you are. Yeah, yeah. Who you are. Um, where do we come from? What do we live for? Too many questions, not enough answers. And so we came to the realization that class still goes on even if you don't pay attention. Born alone, die the same, it's up to you. Are you aware? Yeah, yeah. Are, Are you aware? aware? Searching for a way, there's a way to feel free, flying on my own, uh -huh. because this life's a lesson, go your own way, listen, listen to yourself, let go of all the shame, give, give, don't be for a way find a way to feel free flying on my own i keep searching for a way there's a way uh. to feel free flying on my own uh -huh. i keep searching for a If it happens here, it can happen anywhere. I hope you understand my accent, but that's another part of the story anyways. Thank you for being so great as an audience. And make some noise for my beautiful wife. And for my amazing husband. And for yourselves. And for Jake. Make some noise for Jake. Thank you so much. Here we go. Come, come. Thanks. Wow, wow, man. My goodness gracious. So help me out here because that song, yes. so you wrote that tune? Yes. Great song. Thank you. Thank you. Was not a big hit in the Catskills. <laughs> <laughs> um, but tell me a little about that style. So there's, there's some rapping in there, but you're like sort of singing. So what would you call that? Apparently, we're a fusion of different genres. Um, obviously, we're hip hop to an extent because there's a lot of hip hop today that we definitely don't fit we're into not that exactly hip -hop. category. Yeah. No, um, pop, electro pop, apparently, a little R and B. Some people say, yeah, yeah, for sure, um, I hear it in there. But yeah, we we always go with a different kind of melody or rhythm or song mm -hmm. as a base, and Miguel always raps and I always sing. Well, one of the things that I find interesting about it is, so not being a big rap um, fan or, or really that knowledgeable about it, the little rap that I know has sort of violent, misogynistic mm -hmm. lyrics. Yeah. Your, your lyrics are anything but that. We're Thank trying you. to escape from that concept. I've been writing my whole life, but I always try to escape from cursing or, you know, I curse when I speak, but I never when I write. I have too much respect for writing. And I think it's important to spread a positive message, especially with what's happening everywhere and the fact that we can do something good for everyone. So we're trying to escape from that idea of rap and hip hop and whatever that is. Yeah, I, and what was also interesting to me is, so the spreading the positive message, mm. I mean, I know, I, I don't know if the audience knows, but you're both descendants of Holocaust survivors, right? Mm -hmm. So you come from some stuff. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little, I mean, I, I know your family, so yeah. tell me a little about, you know, how you decided, how both of you decided mm -hmm. to sort of 
turn this around in some way? Because I know that's the journey. Yeah, I think I think in life you're faced with um, life has darkness, right? And life has suffering and pain. But if there's a way that you can alchemize that for yourself and bring some light or shed some light and find the positive, I know that for my grandparents and my father, they're very positive. It, despite everything that happened to them, they really stayed in that lightness and, and were happy to be alive. And at the end of the day, we don't really know why we're alive, right? So we could have been a tiger, and we're not. <laughs> and instead, here we are. And so what do we choose to do with that life in all moments? We all can mm -hmm. be however we choose. It's so. very interesting. I, I, so I, I think you know I'm in this movie called The Last Laugh. Mm -hmm. It's about the Holocaust and comedy. And there's a very interesting conversation that takes place between two survivors, two older survivors. One is very, very positive, like the kind mm -hmm. of people you're talking about. And another is very negative. And they have this interesting conversation about why they're living the way that they do. The one is saying, well, look, this is, this is in a way, she said, this is our revenge, right? We live, we have children, we, we have grandchildren. And the other was saying, I just can't forget. Mm -hmm. I can't forget. Mm -hmm. And it's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. to yes. see. In my case, you know, it was a little bit of the other side of the spectrum. My father was a survivor himself. And, but in, they never spoke about it at home. Uh, but there was always this energy happening, was very traumatized uh, individual. So I had plenty of pain in, in not understanding what was happening until kind of I came to New York where, well, they actually sent me here to find a Jewish woman and that <laughs> <laughs> There was not many in Spain, uh, as you can imagine. And so, yeah, I got very involved with what it means to be who we are, you know, where we come from. So. I think it's important to fight against that pain and against that negative energy and create something positive for the rest of the people that can see you. Yeah. Thank you. Now, I'm sure before you mention Spain, people were wondering, well, where is that accent from? I thought it was from the Bronx. <laughs> But so you're from Spain? Is I was born in Germany, raised in Spain. My family is from Israel, so... Yeah, um, ah. I have a big ident identity issues, you know, that's what I, that's what I have left, yeah. But how did you meet? Where did you meet? Uh, I was actually through work. I was uh, producing a short film and I needed an actress. And then a friend of, of a common friend of us uh, introduced me to her and showed me her work. And I was very impressed. She's a great actress and producer oh. and everything. And I offered her the part, but she told me no because there was nudity in the, in the scene. And she told me she doesn't do nudity, so I guess I fell in love in that moment. <laughs> wow. And, and then, but she told me instead she would help me to rewrite it and to produce it. And we've been working ever since yeah. for three years now. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. That's fabulous. So three years. Mm -hmm. What is it like working together and also now being married? The best. Yeah, <laughs> no, we, we like to say we're doing the things that we love the most with our favorite person. So you know, independently, we'd be doing the same things and we just so happen to love the same things. Yeah. And we have a really good synergy where I falter, Miguel is strong and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So it's a really nice synergy in that sense. And we continue to inspire each other and help each other grow. And we've been very productive and creative, creative ever since we met. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like it's becoming a drag and every time it's more necessary. Well, to me, you know, I know Brienne. Right, and Brienne is, is our announcer. I mean, she's the greatest, and I love her, and I love her family. And I could see it. I can see that the combination, you know, it's like the parts are, the, the whole is more than the sum of its parts. Mm -hmm. It's really beautiful. So what's what's ahead for you guys? I mean, th this music is great, by Thank the way. You. Really, did you like the music? Yeah. Thank you. Really interesting music, Thank and you. I love it. The lyrics, the rhythm, all of it. Thank so where, where are you going? What's what, what do we expect from Brigelle? So we do work in the sense of being hired for other projects, but as far as our music, we're releasing our album single by single with an accompanied music video that we also conceive, direct, produce, edit, all you know, all of the above. Mm -hmm. um, so we have another single coming out probably within the next six to eight weeks. We also have work that we need to fit in in between, but, you know, we're doing that. Mm -hmm. We have... Uh, yeah, a lot of exciting things coming up. We we are Brigel is our name in all of our social platforms and et cetera. So if you want to, we are Brigel. Brianne, B-R-I-G-U-E-L, Gel. And uh, we are Brigel. That's who we are. 
I am so happy to have you on the program. You're not going anywhere because no, you're yeah. part of this program. Yeah, yeah. We'd love to have you come again, Thank sing you. another song. Do you? Would you like to hear them at some point and back to the show? Please help me thank my wonderful guest, Brigel, Brianne Gluckstein, and her beautiful husband, Miguel Gluckstein. Thank Gluckstein. you. Oh, thank my you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My next guest is a talented and inspiring singer-songwriter who wrote her own hit show. From her childhood as a nice Jewish girl in Memphis, Tennessee, to rock and roll dreams in Los Angeles, the show features 16 original Memphis-inspired songs. It's played to packed houses nationwide and offers a unique look into the world of kosher pork, Juby Q's, Elvis, and much more. Please welcome, from the heart of the Mississippi Delta, the Hebrew hillbilly, Shelly Fisher! Thank you. I was born in a river town, down where the cotton's grown. Whole lot of loving. Help to make a happy home People said for a southern belle I was kind of wild Never quite a grown up Never quite a child Love City baby Mama used to call me Love City baby Don't you give your heart away Boys will come and boys will go This is something you should know Everything ain't quite the way it seems Living on Delta Dreams Mississippi lights Something about those Memphis queens Helped to pass the nights Across that bridge to Arkansas To the old plantation inn Dancing dirty boogie Was the next best thing to see Bluff City, baby Mama used to call me Bluff City, baby don't you give your heart away Boys will come and boys will go This is something you should know Everything ain't quite the way it seems Living on Delta Dreams I used to spell your name in shadows In the nighttime skies You used to think I saw for Ever looking in your eyes I believed you when you said you never say goodbye I... Oh yeah One, two, three, four and moved away now ain't it a shame even this old river she don't even stay the same the mississippi's mellow yeah she's mighty mighty rough in a town where everybody living high up on a blow bluff city baby mama used to call me bluff city but don't you give your heart away Boys will come and boys will go
this is something you should know Everything ain't quite the way it seems Living on Delta dreams You know that's right He made me mellow He made me rough He called me baby He called my blood scented baby Thank you Thank you, New York. Sure feels good up in here. Thank y'all so much. Thank you, Jake. Joey Fisher! Thank you, Jake. Let's sit down. Jake, wow. isn't he great? <laughs> Jake, you make it real easy. Thank you, sweetheart. Wow, you're the real deal. Bonnie Raitt, move over. Thank you. This, what a great singer you are, man. That's fabulous. I sure That's appreciate That's your song, that. right? It sure is. <laughs> I wrote every single word. Can I give credit to the other co-writer? Absolutely. Kenny Hirsch is a very famous hit songwriter, and that's enough about him, so <laughs> let's talk about it. He ain't here right now, but you is. Man, I am so happy to have you on, I'll tell you why. Not only because you're talented and, and all that, but I'm used to being a Jew from Brooklyn. And I know Jews who grew up in places where there were a lot of Jews. I don't know any Jews from Memphis. Well, you know what? We got one, we got two, raise your oh. hands, here tonight, and they are my actual family from Memphis, Tennessee, y'all. Can I introduce them? Can I introduce them? Sure. To my stage right, I have my hero, the one and only attorney at law, and to me, greatest guy on earth, Mr. Avrin Brog Esquire. Yeah. <laughs> Married 59 years. Kana Harwell, he has a beautiful Kena wife, Harwell. Sheila. And not only is she beautiful, she can cook. <laughs> Most important thing. And you know what my mama said to me? Her name was Frida. She said, Shelly, remember this. Kissing don't last. Cooking do. <laughs> <laughs> She can cook, she, and she always has new inventive recipes, but enough about her. Let's move on to my stage left, my cousin, Lance Zittrin. And before you give him an entire hand, I want to tell you that he is one of the greatest Jewish Elvis impersonators in the world. <laughs> Is it true? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I heard him been on the program. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Let's go. Lance, let's go. Come on. That's, Come right. On. That, that's right. Come on. What tune are you going to do? Let's go. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, Lance, what's his last name? Zitron. Lance Zitron as right. Elvis. Oh, it, it, it's a, it, it, it's a Memphis thing. We can all do Elvis, you know. That's right. That's but right. I, 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 whoa. <laughs> Love me tender, love me sweet, yeah. never let me go. <laughs> you have made my life complete, and I love you so. A little more. Everybody. <laughs> love me tender, <laughs> love me true, all my dreams. Fulfill yeah. <laughs> for my darling, I love you, yeah. I know and I Thank always you. will. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He does I, sound like Elvis. I told you. We have a great family, not only in America, but in Israel. Great. And I'm so proud to tell you that my, our cousin is the former Prime Minister of Israel, Jake Ehud Barak. We're jumping ahead. I think we may have a photograph. So that's incredible. How did you end up in Memphis, though? Oh, that's a whole long story, because everybody sort of got pushed around. You know, the Jews were not really welcome anywhere, uh, except maybe in jail. Uh, so <laughs> my, my daddy, his name was Max, 
uh, somehow his portion of the family landed in almost Siberia, someplace called Kazan, Russia, and somehow they got to uh, Rovno, Russia, and they were able to escape, I think during the pogroms, and uh, slept in foxholes. It's not a unique story to anybody but us, uh, but all our stories are similar but unique. I truly feel that the Jewish people are the most amazing, indomitable people <laughs> on this planet. We have refused to be destroyed. Well, that's where, where your Yiddish comes from, because as we've been talking, Shelley and I have been talking, preparing for this, and, you know, she'll speak Yiddish, which is really funny to me. Only to hear, dirty words. <laughs> to hear any Yiddish with a, with a southern accent, you know. But I've got to tell you, I think I found you guys out, because, you know, this deep southern accent, I, this is a true story. We were just driving back from Florida, and we were in South Carolina, and we stopped at a hotel to stay overnight. And in the morning, a guy, you know, there's a breakfast, and some guy was talking to the gal um, serving the breakfast, and she said, well, that's just the way these hotels is. <laughs> and the guy, who was like a local guy, says, what part of the world are you from? She said, oh, I'm from right here. And by the way, I know it's that's the way these hotels are. I just want it to be local. So... Uh, are you trying to make fun of my people? No, I'm trying what to... What the hell's wrong? I liked you when I came in. I love it, man. It's such a great accent, but to speak Yiddish with it is really hysterical. Jews want to assimilate. Isn't that true, people? We love to assimilate. But so, wait a minute. But you didn't. You did and you didn't. Because what you've done, you've wrote a show. You've written a show. <laughs> Look, I'm doing what that gal did. You've wrote a show. <laughs> I done, writ, I, I done writ my own show. There you go. You done, <laughs> thank you. You done writ your own show. I did. But it's not an assimilated show. It's like, this is where I grew up, and this is my tradition, and here they are together, and this is who I am. That's right. There's nothing embarrassed about being Jewish or saying, I don't want to be. It's all Southern Jewry. We have done something very similar. I wrote a show about my life called The Jew Grows in Brooklyn. That is unusual. Thank you. It's a great show. I've seen it twice. <laughs> you wrote a show about your life called The Hebrew Bill Hillbilly, Fifty Shades of Ive. Oive. Oive. <laughs> I don't know how many people know your story, but it's so interesting Thank because you. You, you also wrote all of these great tunes. Thank the you. The tunes are really indicative of where you grew up, but they have a Jewish flavor, right? You're going to do a, a tune a little later. There's a beautiful song. Thank you. That's Southern, but also Jewish. What was it like for you? I know for me, when I do my show, it's like having a visit with my father, my mother, my sister. I'm talking about them. It's like I'm with them. I know Billy Crystal said the same thing. He says, you know, it's like visiting my parents and my family every time I do the show. What's it like for you? It's amazing. And it's, what's even more amazing to me is that I'm still mad at my mother. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, well, I lost my dad uh, when he was only 45. He truly never got over this escape and this trauma. He became a very successful person in Memphis, and the thing he was most proud of was marrying my mother. And uh, basically, my mama was born and raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And people said, well, why are you gonna go down south and get married to some southerner redneck? And she said, I heard I can have two yachts down there, a front yacht and a back yacht. Oh. <laughs> But in our community, we were very, very fortunate. Uh, my father and a few other attorneys masterminded an Eastern European immigration to Memphis, Tennessee, of course, for free. And these people became part of one of the most amazing close-knit communities. Everybody was your aunt or uncle. We knew we were different. We weren't particularly well like and for sure we were never ever 100 percent accepted yeah. into the gentile culture but it was nobody really beat us up except i had an experience when i was um nine years old in elementary school and a boy wanted to cheat off my paper i didn't know that i thought it was kind of cute i thought he liked me and he kept saying uh move your paper move your pencil i, I can't see your answers and i'm like what and i studied and he says, I said, move your paper over so I can see it. And I didn't. And he said, dirty Jew. So 
and I was never exactly famous for being a tomboy, but this is a true story. Yeah. Uh, I ran after him at recess, and I punched him in the belly hard as I could, and then I took the opportunity to sit on his neck. Somewhere in Memphis is a blue redneck. <laughs> <laughs> the songs that you wrote, they're poignant and funny, too. Thank but you. one of them, when I heard it, I said, oh, that's what a Hebrew hill really is. And it, it sort of lets us know. Do, to sing a little of the, the Hebrew hillbilly thing. Just, just give us a. This really explains who Shelley is. Well, I can, can I lead you into it a little bit. Set it up. Sure, please. Okay. What happened was, uh, every Jew in Memphis, Tennessee, wanted a Christmas tree. You know that's right. But it, it was not allowed. And I loved Hanukkah. I mean, I still have tchotchkes that are unopened. See tchotchkes. Uh, I don't think someone from, from years, Memphis says tchotchkes. Eight years ago. So. I said, my mama, why can't we have a Christmas tree? And she says, if God wanted us to have a Christmas tree, he'd put one in our living room. God can do anything he wants. Be glad you're different and be proud you're Jewish. And that's what segues into the heat. Thank you. So I wrote this little, and how the whole term Hebrew hillbilly came about was, you know, I went to first grade, and uh, my hair was naturally a little bit darker than it is right now. <laughs> and this teacher that I called Nasty Miss Asty first grade called me up to her desk, and she says, uh, are you one of them Hebrew hillbillies? <laughs> one day I'm planning to make money from that name. <laughs> and so I wrote a little song, and it's like, mm, well, I'm just a little darling. Southern Jewish princess, and I love to sing that good old rock and roll. Woo! Yeah! Raise up on filter grits, specialize in Hebrew hits, and other kinds of funky kosher soul. That's all, y'all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jake. You are fantastic. So many of the songs are, are so great, and it's interesting to hear a story from, from the point of view of a Southern, a southern Jew. You know, and very proud. I mean, you're you. extraordinarily proud. But you were like a wild child, right? I mean, so you, so you you have, I mean, now it's good. You have a lovely daughter, right? Yes, if I, I do. If you don't mind. Can we show a picture of, of Melissa, right? Melissa. Melissa. Melissa's bat mitzvah? Because look and at that. How gorgeous is that? Thank you so much, That Jake. could be at Leonard's of Great Nick. I am so quelling. I am so quelling. It's so gorgeous. <laughs> and then talk about quelling. Just go to the next picture. And that's quelling. This is my beautiful daughter, Melissa Pekin, and me that in is. front of the hotel on her wedding day. And it is a thrill for Amazing. me to... Where do you get these dresses? These dresses are insane. I really what about it. these dresses? <laughs> <laughs> that... Look at that. Please. Oh, my. <laughs> It's painted on, and I'm really proud of this dress because I have recently become the slightly senior spokesperson for an amazing Miami-based designer called Emma Saval. I'll tell you, they are the best. I wouldn't buy anything else again wow. because it sucks me in. <laughs> in Which all is, the right places. I could use a dress like this. She, he, she, can make, she can make men's shirts. Yeah? Yeah. I could use a little sucking in. Hey, I can I can hook you up. You look you look marvelous, darling. Would you do something for me? Sure. I know you've never done this because you told me I've never done this. Lots of women have told me I've never done this, but this is something different. <laughs> but I really haven't. <laughs> could we sing one of your songs together? I, I loved you. What you got in mind? Um, I could steal a, a line from Julie Budd. You want to do the one we rehearsed? <laughs> no, nah, just do what you like. He's so sp this guy is so spontaneous. You are such a capable comedian, host. I really appreciate that because a lot of people just have no idea how to interview or how to ask questions. And Jake do. It's not kind. It's true, but it's true. That's very kind. I'm not that kind, but I'm truthful. <laughs> I'm not that nice. Take this microphone. We want to do this great song. By the way, this is Shelly's new CD. Shelly Kingfisher, Rockin' in Memphis. And we want to do the title song from this CD. Shelly's kind enough to let me sing it with her. So let's do it. Yaman, let's do Rockin' in Memphis. Here we go. Here we are, risking we are. our reputation for up. your entertainment. Thank you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about.
never sleeps But I need to hear that rebel beat Everybody moving too fast Gotta slow down, make it last Muddy Mississippi calls my name In my heart I'm just a southern dame Only place for me, Memphis, Tennessee divine, but you need to be below the Mason Dixon line. The mother Mississippi calls your name. That's right. Cause in your heart you're just a Sunday. Only place to be Memphis, Tennessee. We're rocking in Memphis. That's right. Risking our reputation for your <laughs> entertainment. Thank you. Folks, wait a minute, wait a minute. So, no, I, I want to ask you to do something for me. So, uh, I'm going to put this mic down. I'll go on this because um, I want to to do something special. So, uh, you know, I was listening to all the songs from the show and from the CD. Shelley wrote a song that's really incredible and in a different way. So, as a, as a child of Holocaust survivors, I heard this song and I heard my family and I heard my history. Now, I'm not sure what Shelley wrote it about, but I don't think that that matters. You know, when you write a song, it becomes the world song and it means what it means to you. So, if you don't mind, I would love you to sing this very beautiful song we remember and I'm going to go away and sing it for the people, okay? You know, Jake. It would be an honor. I wrote this song to honor my parents. My co-writer, Kenny Hirsch, wrote this song to play for his father's 100th birthday, and he did. Tonight, We Remember is dedicated to all of those who've gone before us. Shema, 
Thank you so much. Thank you, Jake. Shelly Fisher. Thank you, New York. Y'all sure made me feel real good up here. Stick around. We'll be right back with a very special Catskills Hall of Fame induction. Want to know what programs will be on JBS in the coming week? Then sign up for the JBS Sunday email, which highlights future JBS programming and gives you the JBS weekly schedule, which you can print out and refer to throughout the week. And it's so simple to do. Just visit our new JBS website at jbstv.org and click on Newsletter Sign Up and fill in your name and email address. And every Sunday morning, you'll receive an email with JBS programming information. JBS, expanding Jewish understanding, celebrating all things Jewish. The Catskill Mountains in its heyday was truly a magical place. Just a hundred miles from New York City is where Jewish comedy became American comedy. A fresh air haven for Jewish families, including survivor families like my own. A place where, for a few weeks or maybe even the whole summer, they were able to relax, unwind, and begin to live again. The Catskills Hall of Fame honors the men and women who gave us so much. Entertainers, athletes, musicians, hotel owners, who helped us to thrive, who shaped American culture and left a legacy for us all. Our honoree for this evening is Sammy Davis, Jr. <laughs> Samuel George Davis, Jr. was a singer, musician, dancer, actor, vaudevillian, impressionist, and comedian. He was born in Harlem in 1925. His dad was an African-American entertainer, his mom an Afro-Cuban tap dancer. He was the recipient of the Kennedy Center Honors, a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, and was nominated for a Golden Globe and an Emmy. He was the epitome of the all-around entertainer. And in 2017, he was inducted into the Rhythm and Blues Hall of Fame as the world's greatest entertainer. Davis began his career at age three in vaudeville with his father, Sammy Davis Sr., and the Will Maston Trio. They toured nationally, including in the Catskill Mountains. He later went on to become a member of the famous Rat Pack with Frank Sinatra and company. In 1954, he lost his left eye in a car accident. 
He had earlier started a friendship with comedian Eddie Cantor, who had given him a mezuzah. Instead of putting it on his door, Davis wore it around his neck for good luck. <laughs> the only night he forgot to wear it was the night of the accident. Davis ended up studying the Jewish people. He was deeply impressed by their perseverance. Several years later, he converted to Judaism, finding the commonalities between the oppression experienced by African American and Jewish communities. In his autobiography, he recounts being on a golf course with Jack Benny. When he was asked what his handicap was, he said, handicap? Talk about handicap. I'm a one-eyed Negro Jew. <laughs> It's a famous story he loved to tell. Davis continued to perform in the Catskills, but now as a solo entertainer. He headlined at many hotels, including Brown's, the Raleigh, and the Concord, where he famously shared a bill with Ray Charles. What a show that must have been. The Catskills were a welcoming haven for black performers at a time when racial segregation was still rampant. When Davis headlined in Las Vegas, he had to lodge in a rooming house on the west side of the city. No dressing rooms were provided for black performers. They could not eat in the restaurant or drink at the bar, and they had to wait outside by the swimming pool between acts. This was in sharp contrast to the open welcome given to black performers and celebrities in the Catskills. Rachel Robinson, in her book about her famous husband, Jackie Robinson, spends an entire chapter describing how the Grossinger family made them feel so welcome while Jackie was experiencing enormous racial difficulty in Major League Baseball. This was true for many black performers like Nipsey Russell and Lionel Hampton, Heinz Heinz and Dad, so many more. But Sammy Davis was a special huge presence in the Catskills. People were proud of him. You know, so much so that jokes grew up around him. Did you hear Sammy Davis? He became a Jew. It's true, he became a Jew. I'm not kidding. They sent him to Israel to become an honorary citizen. Sure, they introduced him to Moshe Dayan. It was a disaster because they didn't see eye to eye. <laughs> Those are the Catskills. To me, Sammy Davis Jr. was the ultimate Catskill tumbler, the old style of Catskills entertainer who seemed to be able to do just everything. Sammy Davis Jr. passed away at his home in Beverly Hills in 1990. He was 64 years old. Two days later, all the neon lights on the Las Vegas Strip were darkened for 10 minutes as a tribute. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the great Sammy Davis Jr. All right, Cap, let's make one, two, one, two, three, four. Shouldn't be anything like that. <laughs> Boy, I was kind of swinging. Sammy Davis Jr. Hi, folks. You know, we're often asked where people can get my books or CDs. We've created a very easy way to get them. Simply go to jakeerenreich.com. Both my CDs are there a treasure of Jewish Christmas songs, which is a tribute to the Jewish songwriters, and Yiddish Unplugged, a compilation of my dad's favorite Yiddish folk songs. Both make excellent gifts. Of course, my first book, A Jew Grows in Brooklyn, is available, which publishes weekly called Entertaining Throughout. And there are more items, too. So it's very simple. 
Just go to jakeaaronreich.com, wind up with a book to read, some music to enjoy, or a unique gift for a loved one. Stay well, my friends. I look forward to seeing you. And now back to the show. That's our show. I'd like to thank my guest, Shelly Fisher, the Hebrew Hillbilly. Miguel. Miguel Gluckstern and Brianne Berkson. I want to thank our directors, Lisa Ehrenreich and Sloan Copeland. John Fershband on the fabulous video. He's the best. Yaman Howard, our technical director. Kristen Burke and Mark Hornwick. And ladies and gentlemen, please help me thank JBS Senior Executive Director, Rabbi Mark Olive. Say hi to Lance Citron. We'll thank him too. Good night.